welcome to the NBA Roadshow, episode number 247. My name is John Morgan. Cold coffee is not with me. And I'll tell you what, it's kind of uh, it's kind of the end of an era right now. Uh, I am home in Las Vegas, Nevada. He is home in Las Vegas, Nevada. But I'm just going to say, I, I feel like today is going to be a little bit different. Like I said, the, the end of an era, if, if you had taps to play right now, isn't that the name of the... <laughs> yeah, there you go. I could probably ask Cole Coffee to add that into post, but that's not going to happen. Um, for 247 consecutive weeks, we have sat down every Thursday to bring you the latest edition of the MMA Roadshow. From the very beginning... When we launched this podcast, I said two things were important to me. One, I wanted the sound quality to be good. So we invested in some very, very expensive equipment, and hopefully it sounds very good every week. That's always been a big point of pride for me is that I, I got, you know, dug into my own pockets and, and, and bought some kind of a high-level, broadcast-level uh, equipment because, man, I, I love listening to podcasts, but when the audio quality is bad, oh, man brutal right like i just i can't do it like I, I maybe i'll stick around if it's that good but i mean unless it's truly compelling it's just frustrating right man so we've always had good 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 audio quality i believe i've been proud of the audio quality we've been able to, to reproduce here the other thing was consistency man i wanted to have a consistent schedule because i know maybe some of you are creatures of habit like i'm a creature of habit i like to do things in a routine man my my wife will tell you it's annoyingly so. Like I, I, I'm not. It's not you know to the level of like OCD wildness where like I have to wash my hands six times or open and close a door like seven times before I can leave the house. It's not like that. It's not like that. But I like things to be you know kind of in a routine. You know I got I, I got the the way the order that I like to do things that sort of thing. So I didn't want to be one of those podcasts that you know we deliver and then you get used to it and you're like man. Can't wait to get to the gym this morning. I'll throw them on and listen to some MMA talk while I'm banging out my cardio. And then no episode. So I never wanted to be that guy either. And for 247 consecutive weeks, we've delivered. Today, <laughs> it's going to be a little different. If <laughs> you can't tell already. I've had the flu for the last 48 hours. I, at least what I'm, I'm pretty sure is the flu. I mean, it wasn't. I don't know. My mom kept telling me to go to the doctor, but whatever. I mean, it's not like, I don't know. Like, come on, man. I, it's 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 bad, but I don't know. I didn't think it was necessarily going to the doctor. Maybe if it lasted for several days or whatever. But it was crazy. Monday afternoon, um, I, I did the, the studio shoot that we do at the MMA Junkie Radio Studios. Every week we're shooting this new thing called the Spinning Back Click. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, that's a video that you can uh, see on MMA Junkie. It's on YouTube as well, but it's pretty cool. Like myself, Gorgeous George, Ghost, and the radio crew, we get together and we do this quick little rundown of like hot topics in MMA, and it's been fun. I think we're seven episodes in. It's been a, it's been a fun thing. It was a concept they came up with. Uh, Cold Coffee shoots it and edits it, and and I get to sit in on it and, and kind of help host it. It's it's fun. I think it's it's fast. It's quick discussion. So yeah, we shot that. Then we also shot. Uh, a rankings report, you know, George Garcia handles our rankings at MMA Junkie Radio, and we thought, you know, rather than just releasing rankings, um, why don't we have a little, oh, there we go again, ah. <laughs> why don't we have a little a little video where we get to explain it a little bit, you know, and and, uh, and so, you know, I kind of press him on why certain things are a certain way, and, and he kind of sets up why things are how they are, so, you know, just, if you ever wonder why our rankings are what they are, if you you know, debate. I, I noticed that he's been actually getting in there and kind of debating in the comment section, which is cool. So it's some, you know, healthy, healthy stuff there. So anyway, did all that. Then I actually went to Syndicate uh, here in Las Vegas. Uh, I, I was shooting a video project. Um, it's not my video project to to talk about, so I can't say a lot about it. But it was a pretty cool little concept um, that that a, a familiar name was shooting. I sat down on that. I was I was being asked questions um, about a particular UFC fighter. And, uh, you know, some, some things about his career and that sort of thing. And when the time comes, it's not like a big top secret thing. It's just not mine to reveal. Uh, but when it's done, I'll, I'll definitely uh, let you guys know about it. I thought it was pretty cool. So, anyway, did that. All, all, all was good. Went home. Did a little bit of work and, and spent some time with the family. 
and then went to bed, and uh, man, I, I could like feel it coming on, man. I don't get sick very often, but I could just feel my body running down, man, like like aches and pains in my joints and exhausted, man, just fatigued. And, and yeah, it was just after UFC 245 fight week, and at first I was like, eh, maybe I'm just kind of run down from UFC 245, you know, busy week and all that. But, man, it became readily apparent very quickly. That was that was not all that was going on. And um, by, by the time Tuesday came around, Man, I'm not gonna lie. I was struggling to to like stay awake. As crazy as that sounds, man, I was I was working my shift and and um, man, just like headache, spacey, having trouble concentrating. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I don't get sick very often. I've never had a, a flu shot in my entire life. But um, I man, I I I guess it's just a, a thing of getting old, man. I'm gonna have to start getting one because this took me out of commission for like 48 hours. So I'm sure you can hear it my voice now whether you've ever heard me speak or not you can tell it's not normal not to mention i'm trying to fight back the coughing i've got a refrigerator full of latchkey frosty beverages from our boy anthony beach he came in and visited over the weekend and he's got me all set up with a with a refrigerator full of latchkey brewing i can't even open it up right now man i i I'm having water right now, I'm trying to suppress this cough with water. I got cough drops going on. I've been taking day quill and night quill. So anyway, I stayed in touch with cold coffee and I was like, listen, um, it finally started to break today. So I guess it's probably been about a good 48 hours, you know, Thursday morning I woke up and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm starting to feel normal again. So 48 hours, not too bad, but I mean, for those 48 hours, it was brutal, man. I just, it was, it was, like I said, hard to focus, hard to concentrate, hard to have any energy at all. And so I hit him up this morning, and I was like, well, listen, um, I think I'm, like, my, I, I couldn't even really talk until today, so it was going to be impossible, but suddenly I felt, okay, I was like, my voice is coming back a little bit, I think I can talk. I'm like, that said, I'm I'm pretty sure I have the flu, like, based on what I'm reading, uh, based on all the, the signs of what it is, um, and I don't know if you want me to come over to your house, because everything I read, it's still contagious right now, and he was like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm battling a cough right now, so I'd prefer you not. <laughs> I can't really blame him there. So, so I stayed home, and he's at home, and uh, yeah, man, this is this is uh, uh, the episode that almost ended everything right here. But I, I, it, some audio is being put together, but I don't feel like this is much of a uh, the the quality that we like to bring to the table. I am struggling just just to speak. So, um, man. Thank you to everybody that listens to this show. It means the world to me, man. I, I love nothing more than sitting down and talking to you guys. And, man, when I when I meet people around the country and around the world, like, ah, I love the podcast, man. I love listening to you. Uh, that means the world. So please understand, I am sorry that I am so awful today, man. Um, going to have to start getting those flu shots, man. I'm 41 years old now, turning 42 in March. Gonna, time, time to start uh, – uh, 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 acting like an adult i guess so uh listen hopefully you got a chance to catch the uh oh, this is gonna hurt hopefully you got a chance to catch the <coughs> I can't even do it. and a half <coughs> oh god episode after 245 uh, i didn't get to do it that night but i did it the next afternoon um hopefully you got a chance to catch that and and uh had some thoughts it was a good card Still seems to be the biggest point of discussion is Colby Covington and what the reaction is from him and how he should be treated and all those things. And then, you know, to be honest with you, there's some really great points on both sides of it. Like, I wish both sides could kind of see each other a little bit. You know, like I feel like the two arguments are on the one hand, and, and this is journalists, but just fans too. I mean, what I'm what I'm seeing out there anyway, it's like on the one hand, it's. Uh, yeah, Colby got exactly what he had coming to him, and and, and that's right, and, and you know, F that guy or whatever. And on the other hand, it's like, well, you know, the guy's a pretty good fighter, and maybe we underestimated just, you know, how, how good he is, and maybe he deserves credit for that. And I, and I think, you know, I don't think you have to like the guy or like the promotion in order to, to rank him as a fighter, respect uh, what he's capable of. And I, and I, th I think you have to... Um, at least, I mean, I don't find it difficult to do that, to separate the two. Like, when we're evaluating mixed martial arts contests, I mean, I'm not trying to 
pick a winner by base two on, on who I like better, right? I mean, we're, we're saying who has a better set of skills. I mean, they don't, they don't have to be a nice guy, you know? I, 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 and, I, and, I, and I stand by this. I do not like the way Colby Covington, um, is, you know, promoted himself. I don't have a problem with a lot of it, but he definitely crossed the line in some very specific instances. And, and for that, you know, I think he deserves to be criticized. But um, I, I don't think you should take away from, from what he accomplished um, in, in, in the cage or what he proved in the cage. In fact, you know, it was interesting when we were having our rankings discussion, Gordon George Garcia said, you know, he actually even considered um, – Moving Colby Covington up to number two. Um, right now, of course, Kamaru Usman is number one. Tyron Woodley's number two. Colby Covington is number three. And and based on that performance, um, George considered moving him up to number two. Ultimately decided to just leave him where he is. It does sound like the USC is trying to work on Tyron Woodley versus Colby Covington next, which would be good. Um, but anyway, it's just been intriguing for me to, to follow on. Because I, I think Colby's going to be around for a while. I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, I, I think he certainly has the skills to compete with anybody in the division. Now, what he does next, how he promotes himself next, we'll see. I mean, he had to kind of make a deal with the devil to get where he is, right? I mean, that's that's where it goes. And I think even in that deal with the devil, he went too far. It's not all's fair in love and war, man. You don't get away with anything. I, I mean, I understand that Dana White says this is not the nice guy business, and he's right. You don't get away with anything. You get away with a lot but you don't get away with anything just because it's fight promotion. And I understand there will be people that always hold that against him and always judge him, and that's fine. You don't have to be a fan. Um, but I do think he has the capability of being a force in that division for a long time. We'll just see where he, where he goes from here. Can he continue to train at American Top Team? I don't know. It sounds like Dan Lambert has his back. Uh, Dan Lambert's been a part of his career from the very beginning, and it sounds like he wants to continue to do so. But can you do that if it means separating your coaches, separating the training teams? Now, I mean, American Top Team is a massive facility, man. That gym is huge. So uh, to have one guy in there, uh, you know, working on 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 their own would, would not be an issue. You could absolutely do it. I mean, heck, the last time we were down there doing the, um, the gym visit down at American Top Team, Dean Thomas had, had Jillian Robertson – in a one-on-one -on -one little area, they were just, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one drills. That's kind of her personal coach. So even though pro practice was going on, they were off in an area all by themselves, man. They came in on their own, left on their own. It was at the same time as everybody else, but they were on their own. So it's not like it's impossible to do. It's just, you know, is that okay with your coach? Is that okay with everybody else? So um, I don't know. It's been it's been interesting for me to see how long the fallout has been from 245. It was a big card, of course. <laughs> I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. And, of course, there's not a big event this week. Um, so that probably plays into why it's gone on so long. But the fallout has been interesting. Um, <laughs> hopefully this is comical to other people as well. I hope it's not just annoying. If it is, I apologize. And please don't hold it against me forever. Uh, let's just talk briefly about what's coming up this weekend. There's quite a bit of MMA this weekend. Two Bellator cards out in Hawaii. Matt Erickson is out there. He's covering both those cards. Bellator 235 or Salute the Troops, as it's being known. That's Friday night. Paramount and DAZN. Some good fights there. The return uh, to action of Josh Barnett. It's been a while since we've seen him in action. He's fighting Heine Marks, um, who's at heavyweight now. I think the weigh-ins came at 250 pounds. So, um, you know, Heine has put on some size over the years that we've seen him starting out in the UFC and then moving over to the PFL and, and now in Bellator as well. I don't know that he's a natural heavyweight. I mean, he, he is muscular. I see him. Um, I, I I don't know if he can just overpower Josh Barnett, but we'll find out. That's definitely the key fight there. Um, Toby Missish versus Eric Perez is on there. I mean, Eric Perez, Goyito, of course, the longtime uh, you know, Mexican contender who looked like he was going to be the – the Mexican face of the UFC, he left for a while, went over to Combate Americas, and now is in Bellator. So um, that'll be a name to watch uh, there as well. Key women's matchup, Veda Ardiega versus Alejandra Lara. Um, both those women are wanting to get back to a shot at the title, which is contested the next night against Alima Lee McFarland. So, you know, those are all kind of key fights up there at the top. Then, of course, you know, Bellator always has their, their, their featured 
kind of prospects on there. Speedy Claxton is on there. Joey Davis is on there as well. Joey Davis, a huge favorite here. Um, so both those guys uh, are looking uh, to, to continue their successful run as prospects. Of course, Speedy Claxton um, – lost recently so he'll be looking to um, bounce back that'll be an interesting position for him to be in he was kind of one of these young studs uh now he's going to try to try to rebound from defeat for the first time meanwhile uh joey davis continues to impress everybody he's kind of you know the, the good thing in belt where you don't necessarily get rushed up to the top right so uh joey davis six no finding chris cisneros here um who's, who's certainly much more experienced uh but joey davis is a massive favorite going to this so that's going to be on friday night Again, uh, from the Niles Blazo Center, Matt Erickson is out there. Dan Tom is out there as well. So if you want to kind of follow along with him, I see he's been shooting some kind of behind-the-scenes coverage. I don't think he's doing a lot of official junkie capacity out there. He's got some family out there, um, but he's certainly uh, shooting some video and doing some other things. I know he was there for Josh Barnett's epic uh, pro wrestling-inspired open workouts. He does that a lot with his open workouts, but they were outside in the grand yard there. At, uh, at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. So they had plenty of room to work with. And Josh Barnett, ever the performer that he is, he used it all. So that'll be Friday night. I'm not going to be covering any of that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sleeping. And then I'm going to wake up uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, Simon Head and Farah Hanoon are going to help me out in covering UFC on ESPN Plus 23. That is the card from South Korea now. Uh, if you're not based in uh, North America, you should probably tune into this. There's some good fights. If you are based in North America, don't worry about catching this live. You know, TiVo it. Find it later. Uh, the prelims are on ESPN. Gosh, TiVo, man. I just said how old I am. That's a sickness come through. That doesn't even exist anymore. DVR it. <laughs> uh, and then the main card will be available on demand. Um, but, of course, the main event, Frankie Edgar, Chan Sung Jung, the Korean Zombie. I mean, that is a fight that was supposed to happen. It's happening now. It's short notice for Frankie Edgar. Um, it should be a fantastic fight. Now, Frankie Edgar supposedly still has his bantamweight fight with Corey Sanhagen scheduled after this. God bless him. I just don't see any way he gets out of this fight unfazed. Um, MMA legend, Frankie Edgar. So I will put nothing by him, but... Man, that would be a tall order to, to get out of this clean and then be able to have that San Hagen fight. So we'll see. But uh, that should be an ex extremely exciting main event now. The main card, the six-fight main card, starts at 5 a.m. Eastern. So 2 a.m. Pacific here uh, on the West Coast where I'm at in Las Vegas. So it'll be a tough ask, but at least that'll be available on demand later in the day. Volkan Uzdemir versus Alexander Rakic in the co-main event. That is a big co-main event in that division. Um I think it's easy sometimes to not get excited so much about uh, light heavyweight contests of up-and-comers just because, man, we know we got John Jones at the top, and uh, that is a tall order for anybody in there. But but this is a big one. You know, Rakic has been on a bit of a roll. Uh, currently, we have him at number 14 in the MMA Junkie rankings. Of course, Volkan Uzdemir stormed up the charts. He's had some up-and-down results since. We have him at number 9. But this is a, this is a big matchup um, in the light heavyweight division, especially if Rakic... Uh, can prove successful, man. He's He has looked uh, very, very good as of late. Uh, du Ho Choi has returned against Charles Jourdain. That could be a good fight there. Uh, Kyung Hyo Kang, I, I've always been high on him as well. So, um, you know, a couple of very, very entertaining names could be on the main card. Uh, and then the prelims have some interesting fights as well. Tanner Bozier, tough as they come, but facing Cyril Gane. Man, how good has Cyril Gane looked? He's looking to announce himself as a legitimate heavyweight contender right out the gate. Uh, so keep an eye on that one. Suman Mokhtarian returns. Always uh, been a fan of him just as a person as much as a fighter, man. He's he's always fun to hang around with and talk to sport with facing Sung Wo Choi. Uh, but the one on the prelims that I'm super excited about, Alexander Pantoja versus Matt Schnell. That is a phenomenal fight right there. Uh, to me, that's the best fight on the prelims, and I can't wait to see that one. Uh, tough call right there. Uh, and then, of course, personal interest, I'll be watching out for Miranda Granger as well, the former Cage Fury Fighting Championships uh, title holder, making her USC debut all the way over there in South Korea. So I am uh, I am pumped for that one. So there are some highlights on there. We'll have live coverage. Here. We don't have anybody on site, uh, but myself, as I said, Simon Head and Fera Hanun will all be bringing live coverage on the site. So if you want to bang out the play-by-play -play or whatever. You want to keep those live updates, we definitely will. And then later that night, the, the team will come back. We're kind of working in shifts, and we'll have Bell Tour 236. McFarland versus Jackson, undefeated, 
women's flyweight champion Alima Lee McFarland puts her title on the line against Kate Jackson. The Brit coming in, looking to score the upset. Uh, tough assignment. Look, Alima Lee McFarland is legit. She has, you know, been tested. She's had some trouble spots along the way. She she has proven that she can be, I don't want to say beaten because she hasn't lost yet, but you know she has had to battle out of some tough spots. So, uh, be interesting to see if Kate Jackson can put her there. And then, of course, uh, the featherweight Grand Prix quarterfinal, Derek Campos versus A.J. McKee. Man, how long we've been telling you about A.J. McKee, and now this is another opportunity for him. Derek Campos, tough as they come, uh, you know, has had some up and down results as well, but is going to put you in a fight every single time out there. So um, really, really excited for that quarterfinal fight, man. A.J. McKee, I feel like he's finally ready to, to break into his zone as well, man. He's had enough time to kind of simmer beneath the surface, um, and now it's time. Um, and then the other name I'm really looking forward to, uh, Rafion Stotts. If you're not familiar with Rafion Stotts, man, this kid, I, I feel like should have been in a major promotion a long time ago. I, I, I don't know exactly what it is that took so damn long to, to get him in. I know he had some contract issues here and there. Uh, if I recall correctly, here and behind the scenes, some promoters that didn't want to let him go, that sort of thing. Uh, but but Rafion Stotts is fighting for Bellator. That's a, that, that is somebody you want to watch. And then uh, Nainoa Dung as well, somebody that has looked uh, fantastic early on in, in his professional career at just 3-0. and uh, Certainly somebody you want to watch there as well. So those are kind of the names to keep an eye on. The prelims there, more of the locals. I will say this, the last time out there in Hawaii, the locals threw down, man. That Saturday night card, you know, the Friday night was more the fight for the truth. The Saturday night was the, the fight for, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, tickets were being sold that night. And, uh, man, just the, the that atmosphere I'll never forget because you had all these fight camps kind of showing up early to watch their, their the, you know, their team, you know, their 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 training partners uh, fight. Man, some of the most spirited uh, fights that I've ever seen in prelims, man. The, the, the arena was packed. They were vocal. They were loud. And people were throwing down. So I, I will say this. If you're free on Saturday night and you got some time and, and you know, you're just looking for something to watch, uh, it might be worth your time to at least see some some entertaining fights, even if you don't know all the names involved, uh, because last time they they were pretty special. And then on Saturday, kind of sandwiched in between all that is Glory Kickboxing as well, and that'll air on uh, on USC Fight Pass. Now, normally I don't mention much about kickboxing because I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not a massive kickboxing fan. Um, I don't know why, because it's actually funny. I mean, I've, I've told the story before, but Muay Thai is actually what, what kind of led me into to mixed martial arts. So you'd think, I don't know, maybe that would be something I'd be excited in. I'm not sure what it is exactly. Maybe it's just because there's not as much coverage of it or I'm not as familiar with the athletes. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I mean, the the, the, the highlights are, are, are certainly you know phenomenal when they're on point. But th there are certainly some names worth keeping an eye on on this card. Now, um like I said, it, there, there are some different global distributions. But I think for the most part, it, the full thing will air on USC Fight Pass. And the way they do it, they do it in different cards. And it's it's confusing, to be honest with you. It's the same card, but they've got Glory Super Fight Series, Glory 74, and Glory Collision 2. So it's super confusing. I'm not going to lie. I can't even... But, <laughs> I hate to talk bad about it. They, the the, fo the fine folks at Glory have been very nice and actually talked to myself and Cold Coffee about potentially being out there this weekend. It's in a 30,000-seat stadium, um, and so it's going to be a, a massive event out there in the Netherlands. So I think the scene is going to be really cool. And they, you know, they wanted to get us out there and take a look at it and see the product up uh, close. Uh, you know, Marshall Zelaznik, longtime UFC exec, he's in charge of Glory now, and he, he was like, listen, man, we'd, we'd love for you guys to, to come out here and just be our guests and see it. Um, you know, firsthand, man, see what the kind of product that we're offering. Cause I think you'd like, I think you'd like it. I think you'd be impressed by it. And I think people would dig it. Um, but ultimately we couldn't swing that, but I'd still be paying attention. The main event of the pay-per-view, um, is, is, you know, a, a rematch of, of legends with Rico Verhoeven and Bader Hari. So, uh, it, you don't have to know much about, uh, the kickboxing at all to know those names you, you've probably heard them cross uh, your plate at one time or another uh those are two legends of the sport no question about it so uh they'll be going at it in the main event incredibly uh, anticipated but i think the one that's going to be most interesting for mma fans is alex Pereira uh fights in i guess what you would call the featured prelim if you want to see it that way it's the main fight of glory 74 um which is 
again, it starts with the super fights, then it goes to Glory 74. Then I, I know, it doesn't make sense. But uh, anyway, he's the one that knocked out Israel Adesanya. Um, obviously famous in MMA circles for that. Now, I had a chance to talk to Alex Pereira through an interpreter. He doesn't speak English. Uh, and In fact, uh, his final quote to me was, the only place in this world that Adesanya is better than me is in speaking English. So he doesn't speak English. Uh, he's from Brazil. He speaks Portuguese. Uh, but he did not hold back. You know, he said that uh, he feels like uh, at this time he would knock out Israel Adesanya even even easier than he did last time they fought back in 2017. So uh, it, it's interesting. You know, it's it's uh, it, it was Adesanya's final kickboxing bout before he turned to MMA full time. And, and he made his UFC debut less than a year later. And we've seen, obviously, the, the, the meteoric rise that he's had since then. And, and Pereira even says, listen, I understand that your, your striking skills will diminish a little bit as you're training for MMA because you have to work uh, so much on the rest of the game. You have to work on your wrestling. You have to work on your jiu-jitsu. So you're not going to be as refined in your striking as you would otherwise. He's, he's like, I get that. Uh, and then he said, and it was funny, he said, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure when I go to MMA, my striking is also going to go down a little bit. So I said, when? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, my contract in glory allows me to fight two MMA fights a year. He's like, I haven't found the right ones right now. And I don't know that against Adesanya right out the gate is going to be the one that he gets. But it is pretty interesting. I mean, if if, if Adesanya just keeps ripping through people, um, and, you know, I mean, if he's able to, to get past Romero and get past Costa, which, hey, no easy task there, man. Those are two absolute monsters. But if he was able to get past them, you know, there's always challenges that are, that are rising up the ranks. And there's other names in that division. It's a very, very talented division. But if he's able to beat them, you know, do people start saying, well, what about the guy that knocked you out? He's out there, and he's saying he'll come over to the UFC. I mean, the guy's already fighting on fight pass anyway. I don't know. Maybe it might be something the UFC would be willing to entertain. You know, it's not a fight that needs to happen right now, but why not pay attention to it, right? So if you want to keep an eye on that guy, he'll be fighting Saturday afternoon as well. So that's kind of the the lineup for uh, for what's going on this weekend. Like I said, we'll have it all fully covered for you. Um, hopefully, we'll all be a little bit healthier in in the meantime because this is just ridiculous. I can't I can't subject you to this any more than I can subject me to this. So. Alas, I, I, I believe we we almost have to have to have to admit have to admit defeat. I have to say the streak is over, even though technically it's not. I mean, I can hang on a technicality, I can hang on an asterisk, but I don't know if I should do that. I, I don't know if my honor can take that. I don't know. You guys hit me up on Twitter, MMA Junkie John. You let me know what you think. In the meantime, I cannot subject you to this punishment any longer. Thanks for listening. <laughs>